All right, today we're going to look at CSS sprites and how they can make your images on your website and your website in general load a lot faster for optimization. Basically, what a sprite is, it's, an, it's a single image with a lot of images in it. I'll show you in one second. But uh, if you look at our website here, there are six images across the top. There's a hover state and an on state. So that's 18 images plus three images to make this bar work plus the logo, you know, plus these four. So you can see how quickly the images add up. And if you have to make a request for each image every single time, it's pretty slow especially on slow internet connections. It'd be nice if you could just make one call to one image, right, and then uh, just hide certain parts of that image. So let me just give you examples real quick. Um, here's what Amazon's sprite looks like. You can see how all of their images are just in one single image, even their small little tiny ones down here. Okay, so you can see how they don't make, you know, 50 different images. They make one image call. You can see Apple does the same thing with their, uh, with, with their menu bar at the top. And then you can also see, you know, YouTube does the same thing. So all those stars and, and et cetera and all that, they're just the sprite right there. So that you're not actually making all these different requests. All you're doing is making one image request. This is actually one single vertical image for YouTube. And you can see CNN does it. And you can see, you know, as we go down, a lot, almost everyone does it. So if you're not doing it, then your website's loading slower than everyone else's. So let's take a look ahead and do this. Starting off, uh, we're going to grab, uh, this is already a sprite, so we're going to start off with that one. Uh, I'm going to go with 410.png here and load that into Photoshop. Okay, let's pull this down. So here's Photoshop. Here's our sprite so far. Let's increase our canvas size to um, something more manageable, like 500. Okay, and then we're actually going to bring this back to the top. I already have the CSS for this coded. Let me actually show you what that looks like uh, so I don't ruin that. Um, that's this. Uh, basically, it loads the uh, the PNG as a background image with a width and a height set, and then it background positions each and every link. Don't worry about this. We're actually going to do some, so I can show you what it is. So, what other sprites do we need to have? So, if we take a look at the website, uh, let's say okay, the logo is an important sprite. So let's grab the logo. So we'll just take the logo and drop it in, and drop the logo right into hey. Oh, that's right. Okay. So let's grab the images here, and we'll go into images. Uh, don't grab from the web. And we'll grab that logo, which is right here, and we'll drag that into Photoshop. Okay. Apple A to select, Apple C, right? And paste. Okay. And uh, we're just going to paste that there. And now we need uh, those little tiny images. So that's RT right here and we'll bring that into Photoshop we'll see at Apple V right here and we'll just put that here and you can basically get the idea of what I'm doing I'm just adding in you know each of these little images LT and basically building all the images into a single file all right, so after a while, after doing this for a while, okay, you'll have a file that looks something like this, okay? I haven't done a lot here, but this is what I've done. Um, now, I'll explain this giant bar in a second, but I've got all my sprites here. Okay, so one thing you're going to need is this info panel open. So if you don't know how to get that, you go to Window, and then Info, or just hitting F8 apparently, okay? So what do we need to do? We need to keep in mind, let's actually go to the code here. Let's say we want this logo to show up. So let's uh, go to our where our logo file is. Um, basically, the logo is right here. Div, logo, div, right? And I've got a window dot on location to make it clickable. Okay. So let's go to uh, the CSS. And right now, the logo, which is logo div, all it's doing is loading that logo PNG. It's not using the sprite. Okay. Now, I have this commented out because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. Basically, we need to know the width and the height, and we need to know the background position. That's what we need to know to do a sprite. So, let's go to Photoshop. We'll zoom in. All right. Now, width and the height. West, best way to find out the width and the height is to select that layer by holding the command key, uh, or whatever window, Windows people key uses, 
then control for this maybe and then you select the thumbnail so command click the thumbnail and that will select the whole layer that will read in your info panel here that the width is 203 by the height 93 so we need to fill that in 203 93 for the height now we need to find the background position so uh, command D to deselect in case that's bothering you this is 0 0 if I hover here you can see in the XY 0 0 okay 0 0 is where we need to position our logo so let's position right here and we're at 0 101 okay so in order to get this logo to be from 101 to 0 we have to go negative 101 pixels Did you see that so the actual numbers that I put in are 0 negative 101 okay the sprite is going to show what's ever in this corner so we need to move this whole image right negative 101 pixels to get it up here and we found that 101 by hovering over this corner and seeing it says 0 101 so we'll go to our background position and make it 0 101 and change this to our sprite okay now we hit save and we test it and we can see that obviously it's not going to look any different okay because it's actually there now what if we didn't do this what happens well let's do our zero um, it's going to do our width and height it's going to probably be right here probably cutting right next to the R if I had to guess but let's actually see if that's the case um, go back to the code uh, zero zero and refresh and you can see right there at the R so you can see exactly where it's positioning so but we want it to be our negative 101 and refresh okay last thing um, I've already gotten the intervals for these but let's do the the uh, the RT and LT okay again these all need to be sprite sprite and sprite that way it's only loading it's it's caching it once it loads it once so it never has to load it again sprite 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 okay now the background position for the left or for the right side if we check it out right here let's zoom in on that and you know I mean command plus to zoom in we check it out uh, it is 400 by 104 again that's a negative 400 to get it up and negative 104 to get it up and then negative 400 to get it to the right side okay so uh, for our that was our right side so we got negative 400 and negative 104 and then for the left side it's negative 410 and negative 104 now for the uh, middle section it's dynamically sized in the width so what all I did is I just made one bar uh, basically it started off as uh, it started off as this right and all I did was make it the base basically the width of at the biggest possible one and then again you're just going that way you can stretch so now you're just gonna choose right here which is 210 by 150 again that's negative 210 by negative 150 we choose that and choose that and hit save again you need to have height and width now my width is set somewhere else so don't worry about that but height and width and height and width and again we take a look at it and you can see that they all load okay now one thing to keep in mind with Photoshop and Mac if I save this file check this out if I save this out as uh, you know sprite test.png right you want to save it as a PNG for alpha reasons we'll save it to my desktop okay and there you go now go to your desktop apparently Photoshop does not go away when I do that alright go to our desktop and here's our sprite test if we look at uh, our size of this file we're at uh, that says 4 kilobytes that doesn't sound right if we check our size and not there. Um, sprite, 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 sprite test. Where are you? Sprite test. All right. This says a hundred and fifteen KB. Okay, <clears throat> that's huge for a file that doesn't have a lot of stuff in it. So if we actually open that up in Preview, okay, and File Save As again, right over, you can see that now we're only fifty kilobytes. So we've cut the space more than in half by just getting rid of all the Photoshop data. 
Okay, so that's important. So now if we look at it, it's only 53 KB. So your file size is going to get a lot smaller as long as you don't use direct PNGs from Photoshop. You actually want to open them up in preview and save them out again. Again, for Windows users, I don't know, I've never done it on Windows, but for me, <clears throat> you have to open them up in preview and save as over the PNG, and it cuts the size in half, half almost every time.